So in the demonstration setup that we are using here, we have uh, a virtual environment. So I'm running a standard Mac um, laptop. And on this machine, I'm running uh, two different virtual hosts. In, in a typical test setup, you often would like to have the entire test environment running on a virtual network. But in my setup, um, I'm, I have optimized the number of um, virtual hosts just because I don't have enough memory to run uh, more of them. Uh, but when you have more processing power, uh, dedicated hardware for uh, testing, then you could actually build the entire production network in a virtualized network, making it very easy to share across team members, maybe making it very easy to duplicate in, in different testing facilities and labs. Um, often you need to have at least these type of hosts. So you want to have the hosts running the actual test targets. For example, in the same setup that you would have in a production system. Often you want to have dedicated hosts that are actually running those network analyzers so that they can see uh, all the traffic in that virtual test lab. And then finally, often you want to have uh, dedicated test stations or hosts uh, which are running all the security tools, including the buzzers, but also other tools that you might want to use in, in, the, in the environment. And then um, a dedicated host for the um, IDS uh, capability or in, intrusion prevention capability. Of course, you could have the IDS uh, functionality in all of the hosts, but quite often in, in uh, practical environments, you would also have that in a separate host. So um, it's good to have that also in the same same type of a setup in the virtual lab that you would have in the, in the production network. Um, so in my setup, I have two different virtual hosts. So I'm running one um, host, which is uh, running Linux. Um, and the other host is running uh, Windows uh, station. And actually, on this Windows host, I'm also, uh, I also have the, I, I have the uh, Snort IDS uh, set up on this host. So it's not um, able to protect the Linux system, but it's also only trying to protect the Windows host. Um, the next setup in um, conducting a, a test environment, building a test environment, is usually starting with known vulnerable software. And the reason for that is that before jumping directly into testing the latest releases of Apache or um, Oracle databases, it's good to practice with something that you know is weak and where you can definitely find some weaknesses. And there's two different approaches to that. The other one is that you take old versions of software. So for example, what I have here in Linux, I have an old version of the uh, WZD FTP diamond. And you can actually then easily go and find details of uh, mistakes that uh, this specific uh, FTP server has. And then you can practice running those and you can see that the tools that you use at least find those issues um, in, in the software. Maybe some other, other ones as well that the developers didn't even know they have uh, when releasing the software and which have been found maybe later in, in, in the future releases. Um, and the other tactic is to take betas and other really bad quality stuff out there. Um, so for example, just going to source ports and getting the um, small student projects or stuff, uh, stuff that people have built for the fun of it. And uh, one example that I'm demonstrating here is a zip proxy running on Windows called WinZip. It's programmed uh, with Visual Basic or something like that. And I don't think it's intended for any real life uh, critical use, and definitely based on the test experience, um, I hope no one is really using it. But uh, taking this type of projects, for example, if you practice with FTP fuzzing, you can find hundreds of different small uh, pr projects uh, where people have built FTP servers for uh, different use cases. 
and um, it's very easy to find weak, bad quality software. And then after you have uh, the experimental test lab set up, uh, then you will need the analyzer uh, tools. And you can use, of course, tools like Wireshark and such, but often in, in, in virtual networks, you, what you can also do is that you use tools provided by the uh, virtualization uh, vendors. So, for example, using VMware, you could use the uh, sniffer provided by the VMware um, uh, virtual um, products themselves and just save those recordings into a file and then open a visual uh, analyzer to actually see what's happening in the network. So for example, our uh, network analyzer product can then see um, um, and analyze that recorded file uh, real time and then see what's actually happening in the network while you are conducting your tests. Um, the first tool that I have here is actually a free tool by Codenomicon. So you can go to our website and request a free copy uh, of the FTP buffer. It's completely free, completely full to product, uh, no limitations. And I might have it running here. Let's see. Yes, I do have it. So only thing here what I need to configure is really uh, setting up the test target. So in this case, I hope it was this IP. You can, ask, of course, just look at it in the test setup as well. And yeah, it looks like it's the um, right test target that we are testing against. And then that's it. We just press play button and see what happens. Last time it exploded on the test generation side, but this time it works nicely. Um, so maybe I was too early on saying that. Yeah, it started testing. It's a bit slow, which I believe is because of the webinar software, but you'll anyway see that it's uh, sending test cases toward the test target and um, getting responses also uh, from the test target. We can see that there's some type of uh, interoperability issue here, which I believe is because I was using uh, wrong username and wrong password, so I could also fix this. But I, I don't spend too much time on the FTP faster because you can get the uh, free copy of the uh, full product yourself and verify that. You will find out that uh, the test target that, that I um, showed in the presentation, um, it will fail with quite many different test cases with the free tool. And it's easy to find other test targets as well. Um, let's go back to the presentation. We have some 13 minutes left, so let's try to keep on schedule. So running the FTP tool actually reveals quite funny um, failures as well. So for example, the red screen here, which you might or might not see, um, is actually uh, the logging uh, window. So it's just viewing the log as it's being generated. And um, apparently some ASCII characters that you might not want to have in your log files went through and then changed the color of the console itself. I don't think it's a big security mistake, but anyways, it shows that there's probably some um, input filter